Okay, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Very good morning to all the students. Today, uh, we are going for the chapter 8 on the Takapo underwriting, the basics, surpluses and uh, retakaful. So, the objective of the learning, we have it down there. Yeah, We'll go, we'll bring you through all the objective lah. Okay, here we have another new words that you're going to learn. Uh, re takaful. Yeah? So, what is the takaful and what is re takaful? Contribution of the policy order. Uh, not the exchange condition. In price as in the conventional insurance. So, in the event of the visit or surplus arising of takaful fund, appropriate treatment of the fund should be reflected in the nature of contribution. We will explain that later. Yeah? In this chapter, we will consider the treatment of deficit and risk fund, underwriting surpluses, and the practice of free takaful. So, in the dual system, the issue of insurance by takaful operator is also addressed. So, basically, this topic we'll discuss more in detail of the function of the takapul operator lah. so what happened if the claims by the policy order exceed the funds so exceed the free premium that uh, they have been collected from the policy holder yeah so we go to the two types one is family one is general so, Takaful being a mutual character uh, does not impose any financial obligation on the Takaful operator to pay the entire claims outstanding if the Takaful or risk fund is in deficit. But I mean here, if there's, uh, for example, we take a uh, good example in Malaysia, lah. the Malaysian airline uh, shot down in uh, Ukraine. <coughs> so, there are hundreds of people died. So all of them will claim the insurance. You just imagine. So and this kind of insurance is very big in number because it's a accident, a flight accident. So the amount become big, maybe millions, hundreds of millions. Yeah. So if the target pool operator uh, from the premium cannot pay, so what happened? Uh, these are the thing that you're going to learn. For example, total amount of collected by target pool. For example, just now in the mass airline was shut down, the premium that they collect is maybe 100 million ringgit. But because all of them died at one go, the claim come to maybe 300 million ringgit. So how the Takafo operator to pay the claim? Because they only collected 100 million ringgit. Uh, these are the things that you're going to learn and how the system works. Third, under the very concept of Takafo, it is the fund that is common pool of donation that will have an obligation to pay to the claim. So, the concept is that they collect the premium for you. And if any one of you got accident, they will use the money to pay. i give you a good example back. Last time I said, if five of you going for a picnic, you collect 100 ringgit each. If one of you got injured and need the 500 ringgit, you will get the the money from the final ringgit. That's how the Takapul company or Takapul operator work. The same concept. Yeah. So in this case, just now, if the aeroplane uh, crash, shot down, the claim from the policy holder is 100. More than the premium they collect from the from the policy holder. So how are they going to solve it? So this is the meaning of mutual contribution and mutual indemnity. So how they doing to settle the problem of the concept of the mutual contribution and then they can to identify every one of them but the money they collect is less than what they claim so in case of malaysia there is a requirement by the takaful regulator for the takaful operator to pay the outstanding claim using the shareholders fund so in the previous chapter we we already mentioned that for the takaful operator or the takaful company to set up, they mean they have must have a minimum payout capital. For example, the government says you must have a payout capital of 10 million ringgit. 
yeah so then only the government will issue them the license so in the case that they collect the premium for 20 million ringgit and suddenly some big case accident like the Malaysia Airlines the claim is 25 million ringgit so the premium they collect from all of you policy order is 20 million ringgit so there is a shortfall of 5 million ringgit so the government said well you said the company last time you have a paid up of 10 million ringgit you use so your own paid up capital another 5 million ringgit to pay off the claim so that's how they work yeah you must just understand the basic logic it's not that difficult to to understand so uh, treatment of underwriting surpluses in the couple so now just now we're talking about deficit so now we're talking about surplus so surplus in Takapur result from the difference between the residual from the total premium plus investment, return, net claims, expenses and relevant provision. So such was necessary to part of Takapur if years where claims are low and supplies will grow. Uh, in worst case, the surplus may not be sufficient for insurance company. It goes without saying the insurer must properly. Okay, in summarize, you can read that one. In summarize, what happened if the surplus situation? Just now with the visit, now surplus situation. So they've been collecting premium from all the policy holders every year. For the last 10 years, now they collect about 100 million already. Yeah. For the last 10 years, the claim was small. There's no big catastrophe like the Malaysian airline uh, shot down or anything. So for the last 10 years, they've been collecting premium 100 million plus their own capital 10 million. So they have 110 million in their account. So now, within that 10 years, so the claim may be 20, 30 million. So they have surplus of 70 million plus their own capital 10 million. So they got 80 million. So what they're going to use for this 80 million after they deduct yearly dividends or profit distribution, they still have maybe another 40, 50 million. Yeah. So here is the situation where they have the surplus money it goes without saying that the insurer must properly manage the underwriting risk in terms of selection of policy orders and the inherent risk premium and indemnity correction and risk to be transferred to reinsurance company in the worst case surplus may not be sufficient for the insurance company to meet all claims okay there's a two situation here in this note one is that you have surplus the other one just now you don't have the surplus so First part, you have surplus, you need to think what to use with the money to invest. Second part, there is no surplus. For example, the case of uh, accident just now, uh, the claim is uh, you collect, they collect the premium 100 million, but the claim now is 300 million. So how are you going to solve the problem? So that's where we have to say that they have to do the next step to cover their risk, their risk to cover the 300 million to pay off the thing. So we will learn from here. They were, this way we come to the re uh, situation. So in Islamic insurance or Takaful, the treatment of the surplus is critical and not only for from a commercial perspective as I later above, but also more importantly from a Shara perspective. So first point, first situation when they have the surplus, they need to invest the money. They need to make more profit so that they can distribute, distribute at the end of the year to the policy holders, the profits. The risk has been transferred to the insurer and therefore any surplus from the premium will be treated as profit to this insurer. Essentially, this feature commonly associated with general insurance industry based on life insurance. This approach does not suit Takaful, which unlike commercial insurance, is based on mutually or contribution and MD. It can be inferred that this concept that all premiums and thereafter and surplus should belong to the participant. So whatever the surplus is doesn't go to the Takapul company. It all belong to the policy order. We learned that in a previous chapter. Shelters of the Takapul company do not share on this surplus because it belongs to participant collectively as defined by the control Takapul contract. Accordingly, several fatwas and sharia ruling have been issued by many Takaful companies confirming that the participants have the exclusive right on the underwriting surplus. So what it means here, whatever the surplus 
of the Takaful does not go to the Takaful company or the owner of the company. So the company must be have a owned by, let's say, the Takaful is owned by me. So it doesn't go to me because I'm the owner of the company. Or the Takaful operator belongs to a bank, so it doesn't go to the bank. So all the surplus will go back to the policy holder. Not in the conventional situation. Conventional situation after conventional insurance, after all have been deducted, the surplus will be benefit will go to the profit to the owner of the takaful or the shareholder of the takaful. Yeah, you must be very clear. One is the shareholder of the takaful, the owner of the takaful operator. The other one, we, the public, which is the policy holder that will pay the premium. Please. Uh, understand this. Understand these two next thing. If not, what I mentioned here, you won't be explained. You confuse yourself. Yeah. So the takaful company may invent the takaful surplus and be of the participant. If there is in any express, in this effect, the takaful policy the such investment aspect. So basically, when you buy the policy, they will also have some uh, mudarabah contract that you have to sign with them. That they will allow the extra money for 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 investment purposes uh, on uh, the to get to get profit return to be give to you. So this is uh, signed in the first situation. One you buy as a policy holder to cover you. The other one you sign as a contract mudarabah to allow the takaful operator to invest the extra money surplus that they have in uh, anticipating of returns. Profits at the end of the year, they can give back to the, distribute back to the policy holder. So sharing the surplus, so some Takapul have adopted another mechanism with regard to the treatment of surpluses. They argue that the surplus sharing is kind of incentive fee to render them more prudent in their underwriting and selection of participants. They contend that the fees of managing Takaful can be levied on two levels, namely on the inception as well as the end of the operation in the norm or the share of surplus. Both fees can be based on certain percentage. Yeah. So the fees paid the, to the Takaful operator at the end result in the sharing of surplus within the participant and the operator. So let me explain here. We've been talk, we have been uh, saying that all the surplus must go to the policy holders back after deducting the expenses by the tarpool operator. But some tarpool operator have another concept. They are copying a little bit like the conventional uh, uh, insurances that they should not only pay the fees to operate the tarpool. They also want a part of the profit uh, for the tarpool operator as an incentive for them to work harder to make more money for the for the policy holder. So that can be accepted if the policy holder and the takaful operator agree. For example, like in the Mudarabah contract. So in this case, say that whatever profit takaful operator will take 30%, the balance 70% only will distribute to the policy holder. This also accepted in the Sharia uh, compliant law if both parties agree. But in principle, uh, the uh, Sharia law does not uh, allow them to take any profit other than the, uh, the fees or services that they take. But again, as it is depend on both party. If this takaful operator uh, suggests that one and uh, the policy holder agree, you can still proceed. Yeah, this, uh, then you can choose one takaful operator does not charge this. Uh, profit sharing. The other one have profit sharing. So you can choose whichever you want. There's uh, always uh, pros and cons. Those who are not having the profit sharing, maybe they do work hard because they don't see any money can get to the target pool operator. They just invest your money uh, for minimum return maybe because they are not getting any profit. But if there's a profit for them, they may be even work harder. Work harder. This is a normal human being instinct. You give the incentive, they work harder. So, it's allowable in the uh, Takaful uh, industry, uh, Islamic way, if both parties agreed to proceed another uh, mode of profit sharing. Okay. 
So they are talking about surplus. So now we are talking about deficit. So this way they come uh, the, policy, the, the policy of reinsurance or we call it here retakaput. So when there is a deficit. So reinsurance means by which conventional insurance companies can protect themselves against the risk of loss by transferring some of all of the insured risk to other insurance company known as reinsurance company. Individuals and corporation obtain insurance policy to provide protection for various risks. Yeah. So it's good example just now the, the Malaysian airline shut down, or any case of uh, big uh, what do you call it uh, hurricane or earthquake. Yeah. Uh, so there's big earthquake in Kuala Lumpur. Half of Kuala Lumpur, Kuala Lumpur building uh, destroyed. So the insurance policy holder for this uh, in Kuala Lumpur will start claiming their money. So the Takaful company, let's say just now, they only collect 100 million. But the claim there is maybe 500 million by the policy holders. So this way we have the policy of reinsurance or we call it re takaful or risk transfer. So in summary, what will happen is that uh, they are bigger insurance company. Let's say now my Takaful company, I own a Takaful company, or one bank, my bank own a Takaful company, the paid capital is only 10 million ringgit. But there's another big insurance company, the paid capital is 500 million ringgit. 500 million ringgit. So they are big Takaful operator because their paid capital is 500 million ringgit or even 1 billion ringgit. So I, as a small Takaful operator with only 5 million ringgit, I can reinsure my risk to this big takaful operator. Okay, what it means? Simple. Yeah? Simple is that my bid up is 5 million. I collect maybe premium 100 million. But my risk from this policy holder, for, I can foresee if the big uh, catastrophe like the floods or earthquake, the claim may be come to 300 million. I predict from my policy holder that I, uh, they already buy from me. So if this happen, where am I going to get the money to pay the 300 million? I am a takaful operator. How am I going to pay the 300 million claim by the policy holder? My payroll capital is only 10 million. If I collect 100 million and uh, the claim by the policy holder at one time because of the earthquake 300 million and my payroll capital is only 10 million, I only can pay 110 million. Where am I to get another balance of the 300 million that they claim by the policy holder? So what the small takaful operator did is that they will reinsure their risk to the big company. So the premium that you pay, the policy that we pay, the premium, let's say 10,000 uh, uh, premium, so they will reinsure the risk of the 10,000 to another bigger company by paying them premium from your money. You pay the Takaful operator 10,000 uh, premium, they will reinsure the risk to a bigger company. They will use that 10,000, maybe 5,000 to pay the premium to the other bigger company. For the purpose of sharing the risk, in case there's a big catastrophe, big amount need to be claimed, then like example I gave just now, if the 300 million claim, they I have only got 100 million, 100 million pre, policy premium plus 10 million paid up. It's already 110 million. So I need the balance. Yeah? 300 minus 110, I need another, uh, how much is that? 190 million to cover the claim at one go. So the big insurance company, which uh, just now reinsurance or we re takaful they, because they are paid capital, is 500 million, they are big. So they will come to cover the balance of 190 million. Yeah? So that is the the story of this reinsurance of re takaful Yeah? In summary. Yeah? So what this means? The risk transfer. You transfer. I am a small operator. I transfer my risk to a bigger takaful company, bigger insurance company. But they also will ask for some Premium lah for them to take your raise. That's within the smaller takaful and the bigger takaful company to negotiate lah. Yeah? Because you as a policy holder, 
you're not bothered to know anything. You already buy the insurance from the small takaful company. It's the jobs of the tak small takaful company to cover their risk, to reinsurance your policy to a bigger takaful company. So they call it risk transfer. Lah. So the main reason for insurance is to allow the primary insurance, which uh, the small takaful company, uh, known as the seeding company, uh, seeding company or the small company, to assume the individual risk greater than its size would otherwise allow and to protect the sudden again catastrophe losses. That's how I explain this now. Yeah. They're small company. They cannot cover at one go big catastrophe. So they get a bigger company to support them. So reinsurance allows the insurance company to offer larger limit of protection to a policy holder and its own capital will otherwise allow. So in case, let, let's say if I, my paid out capital is 10 million, I collect the premium 100 million. But I calculate all the policy order is any risk is maybe 80 million. I don't need to to reinsurance or re my your policy that uh, that we buy from them. Because they calculate the risk is only if anything happen catastrophe is only 80 million. So they have enough money. If they have enough money to cover, they don't reinsurance or re the the risk. Okay? So income smoothing, reinsurance can help. Reinsurance here is re lah can help to make the insurance company result more consistent by absorbing larger losses and reducing the amount of capital needed to provide the coverage. Can I give you an example just now. This is what actually meant. Lah. So without such a reinsurance, the company profit for a year in which large claims were made against, for example, just now, sudden earthquake, would not be consistent with the consecutive years. As for the capital, the insurance company would not would need to maintain the same level of uh, liability and also the, the returns that they have to give. So, if they don't uh, re reinsurance the risk, so in any one year there's a big catastrophe, then the whole that year they cannot pay any dividends or benefit to the policy order. So there's a risk for the policy holder. But if they already re so if the claim is big, so half of them will be taken over by the other bigger insurance company, they still can maintain to give the benefit to the policy holder as what they've been given in the past years. So that is what they're trying to give the meaning. So there's two benefits. One, the risk transfer, uh, so that they can still cover the... Uh, the payment for the claim, second, they still maintain and give the average profits or return they can give to the policy of the every year. So that is very important of this reinsurance or re uh, uh, policy. So, okay, let's see what here. In surplus relief, an insurance company surplus is equal to asset as liabilities which is roughly the same as shoulder equity in the balance sheet of a non-insurance company. That's simple. A surplus means after minus everything, you got extra money. So what you want to do? Reinsurance can improve the insurance uh, company balance sheet by reducing the amount of liabilities and thereby increasing the supply. So normally they have to submit their annual account to the government. So if they said they, they have to put a calculation down there. If they collect premium 100 million, the government said, from your 100 million, how much you think you will, the risk you going to cover? If the cover is 300 million, then the regulator or the government who issue the license will say, how are you going to cover 300 million? You collect premium 100 million, your paid up is 10 million. Something happened, the claim as you said yeah, is going to be 300 million. How are you going to pay? So that's why they have to put in the balance sheet, okay, we already reinsurance it. We re for it to a bigger company. This bigger company will come and assist us if any big claims come at one go. Uh, so this is another benefit of the re or reinsurance because it can answer to the regulatory will ask by the government how they going to solve the problem if they have this kind of situation. Yeah, because the government is not going to come and help. There's no 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 way because this is all under private uh, initiative. So arbitrage. The insurance company may be motivated by arbitrage in purchasing reinsurance coverage at a lower rate 
then the amount it charges the insured of the underlying risk. So normally the the reinsurance uh, company, the big company, will also not charge a very high premium because they they are very big. So they have a lot of uh, uh, premium they collect. So normally the small takaful company, the reinsurance uh, premium they pay, it won't that very big. So it's quite reasonable. So this uh, policy is uh, working very well in the insurance industry. Uh, whether they are conventional or even the takaful insurance. Yeah. Insurance operation is a financial transaction that produces immediate profit with a lower risk involved. So they pay small risk but they're going to get large profit covered by the insurance, bigger insurance company in case of any catastrophe. So the gain in arbitrage is made through the advantage taken on the different pricing models and tax discrepancy that exist in the market. Well, basically in the re takaful insurance, there are also benefit uh, incentive that government give so that uh, the small takaful can benefit and pay small premium to the bigger takaful company to cover their, their, their risk. So that's what we are uh, explaining here. If they pay so big premium to the big uh, takaful company, then it's not going to help the small takaful company. So the government give some incentive to big takaful company uh, or reinsurance company big rig takapul insurance company or reinsurance company a lot of incentives so that they can help the small uh, takapul company to survive in case of uh, big uh, claims the takapul industry is relatively young and many of the companies face dilemma in relation to the insurance so as I mentioned just now as the our takapul insurance and is quite new 1983 after the first Islamic bank, then they have the insurance company, the government act 1983. So because of that, they are not very strong financially. So that's why the reinsurance takaful become a big uh, help to to uh, to help those small takaful company which is just uh, started the operation. They take they take they have to take many years to collect millions of premium. You can collect 100 millions of premium within a year or two. Yeah? So, as uh, many takaful companies, they are still small in terms of capital. The need of reinsurance service is relevant in order to transfer the risk to another party. That's what I've been telling you now. Which has a bigger capital yeah, to cover the future claim. So, at present, most retail companies are, are, are so small. No, the most, most retail companies are also small. Even in Malaysia, the Rita Kapul company is also small. Not as compared to the big uh, Rita Kapul company in overseas. Here, maybe I said the Rita Kapul company paid up capital 10 million. But Rita Kapul company here, maybe 100 million. But Rita Kapul or reinsurance company in America, oh, their paid capital is billions. So that's what we're trying to say. Because in the Islamic insurance, because they just started, because even Rita Kapul company, their paid operator is not big compared to uh, retakaful or reinsurance company in the conventional. For example, AIA, American International Insurance. Oh, their big paid capital is billion US dollar. Yeah? So that's what we're trying to say. But neither way the less, we have to start something small and then we grow lah, the, the Islamic insurance. Because those uh, conventional also, they have already for 100 years, yeah? not one or two years. We are only talking about 10, 20 years. Uh, conventional insurance has been there for maybe two, three hundred years. Yeah? So that's why their capital is much bigger. The issue that arises is whether a takaful company can reinsure or transfer a risk to another conventional insurance company. Uh, so now whether the Islamic uh, takaful can reinsure or re takaful to a conventional uh, insurance company. So this is uh, also now under a lot of discussion because uh, whether the re takaful insurance company or re -insurance, conventional reinsurance company, whether they Sharia compliant or not. If they are Sharia compliant, yes, uh, it's allowable. But the activities of this uh, reinsurance conventional is not Sharia compliant, then the takaful or the uh, takaful insurance uh, Islamic cannot 
use the conventional reinsurance to retakaful their risk. So the most likely answer is that the incumbent upon the takaful company to reinsure a risk to retakaful company that conduct a retakaful operation according to the Sharia complaint. So they have to look around lah. Uh, if the uh, conventional reinsurance, some of them may have uh, uh, running operation with the Sharia complaint principle. Uh, with a minimum uh, non-compliant, then they can uh, reinsure their their takaful to the conventional insurance company. So as uh, we know, is everything is still developing. They are still coming with policies and uh, ways of solving the problem. So it's not settled. Everything settled today, but we learn. We teach you what is happening today, but in future they may change. Eh? They may change the policy and rules that uh, you, as a student, that's why you, you must learn now all the basic thing. Then in future with any changes, you will be uh, easy to understand what is happening. If you don't understand what's happening today, in future what they talk about Rita Kapoor insurance, you also don't understand why they're changing the policy. So this is very important, whatever we have today. Uh, we learn with tissue. It gives an example like the COVID, uh, what do you call it? The COVID injection. Eh? Vaccine. Uh, the vaccine today, some people know good, some people say good. It's very simple. Whatever you have vaccine today is the best already. Yes, in future, five years time, there's, there are better vaccine because people develop more. People come in uh, with a new version of a better vaccine. But it's not for you. Maybe that's for your children. For your grandchildren maybe. Because my age, 65 years, I'm dead already by 10 years or 20 years time. So even the new vaccine come, I'm not going to use it. But what today the vaccine is already good for us. So we just take it. We don't say that there is going to be future good vaccine. For sure. Those vaccines they use for the flu 30 years ago are different. Those vaccines they use for malaria sickness 30 years ago is different from the vaccine we use today for the flu or for any uh, other diseases today. So same thing like here. The insurance or reinsurance, whatever happening today is what is, is the best. But this is where you need to learn. Tomorrow they could start changing new laws, new things. You understand what's happening. Yeah? Okay, the practice of using conventional uh, reinsurance companies reduce the takaful risk. I already mentioned that just now. Why they need the retakaful or reinsurance? Uh, only retakaful comply with Sharia. We already said just now. Uh, in basic, they only can retakaful with Sharia compliant. Whether there is a uh, retakaful uh, insurance company or conventional company. If there's a Sharia compliant the activity, they still can use the uh, retakaful lead to the conventional reinsurance scheme. Okay. In takaful operation, participants are individual or corporation who seek to protect uh, each other by joining scheme of mutual donation and mutual protection. The takaful activity is someone who manage uh, the whole takaful activity for consideration that is wakala fees. Eh? So normally, as we know, we have to pay certain fees to the uh, takaful operator for operating our uh, money, the policy, and also for, for, for to, to protect our risk and our investment. But as I said just now, there are some Takaful company also asking to take a profit of the uh, investment, which is uh, allowable in the practice if both parties agree. Yeah. <coughs> so Islam is not really a, a very rigid law that you cannot even move here and there. Uh, in Islamic law, they are basic principle. But there is always exceptional to the law, which can be done if both parties agree to a uh, situation where it is manageable. For example, uh, now the Takaful want to have a profit. See, they say they take 30% of the investment profit and the policy order takes 70%. Uh, that still may be allowable in the Sharah law. But that it cannot, it won't be allowed in the Sharah law if the Takaful operator say, we take 70%, policy order take 30%. Uh, then will be allowed. Because this uh, 
under way is like our pricing yeah so there are a lot of things need to learn further with they allowed or don't allow doesn't mean that they allowed they can do what they can do but this must be fair to the both party in islam there always a fairness that they are looking for yeah <clears throat> if there is a deficit in takafu risk fund the shareholders of takafu will lend their money uh, on an islamic basis which is interest fee the takafu has the right to reimburse the advance for the next subsequent year okay this is very simple just now i said if let's say the takafu operator collect 100 million premium their pay the capital is 20 million but that year the claim is 110 million so they have to use their own capital out of 10 million take uh out of 20 million let's say the capital and the premium is 100 million and the claim that year for earthquake is 110 million so from the premium they can only pay 100 million so they have to take from their own capital the takaful operator 10 million to to pay for the shortfall uh, so it's allowable but in future when they collect back the premium they will have to they can take back the 10 million that they pay in advance for the risk to cover back the the money that they they already advanced for the indemnity that people claim yeah so that is what they mean lah. so as i said it's always a benefit for both party in fairness is what the sharia law is looking into okay in summary yeah in summary conventional insurance is broadly categorized into life insurance Uh, non indemnity based lah life insurance is more for your personal lah yeah and general insurance indemnity based uh, indemnity based let's say uh, for children to cover your house if your house burn and this is uh, the insurance to cover so we call it the one non indemnity based lah not personal yeah so there two type of insurance uh, two surpluses result from the difference between the residual from total premium plus investment return net all the claims expenses and relevant provision and reserve so surpluses that is what the surpluses we talking about from that surpluses like just now they going to invest or they going to share the profit third uh, the surplus reflect primarily the quality of underwriting and insurance companies in their risk underwriting process uh, such surpluses are necessary to part of part of a takaful As I mentioned earlier, if the takaful operator only get a small piece from the investment, they may not do a good job. So what we call it, the quality of their job is is not what expected. So, but if there is a chance that they also can make a certain portion profit from the from the investment return, then they can do even a better job. So maybe the quality of uh, underwriting is much better. So that's why there's always a pros and cons. There's an incentive there if you can allow both party can allow them to make any additional profit from the return. They may invest better or they may even do a better job. The quality of their investment is much better. That's what we're trying to say. That's why in the Sharia law we allow, we allow. Not only they can get the fees, but they also can collect a small portion of profit if both party agree. If that will help them. To as incentive to give a quality underwriting job for the policy order, I mean for you all. For yeah, insufficient surplus might mean that the insurance company cannot meet all claims and deficit that will have to be met using shareholders fund. Okay, so one is that as I give the example, if the you collect premium one hundred million, you paid up twenty million, suddenly suddenly the earthquake. They claim one hundred and ten million, so the the takaful operator have to use their own fund, pay the capital that twenty million to advance ten million first to settle the thing. So the so but in future they still can collect back the ten million which they advance from the future premium they're going to collect from the policy holders because the the insurance company is not going to close. They're going to solve slowly the current problem, but they continue. They collect. Policy order premium in future, they get millions more in future, so they will collect back whatever money they have advanced to solve the claims. Okay, lastly, the surplus belong to the participant in the takaful scheme, and not the takaful company. Okay, the surplus belong to the 
participant yeah not goes to the company compare with the conventional all surplus after minus everything it goes to the company that mean goes to the company it goes to benefit to the shareholder of the company here in islam cannot because it's more like i said here it's like cooperative kerja sama you have to make together you make money you you share the profit together whereas the concept of a conventional insurance is not like cooperative it's more commercial yeah they do business they want to make profit as much as possible whereas in the takaful no the minimum you have to pay whatever fees the operating fees they have to pay then the rest will share by the policy holders the benefit unless as i said just now they have a contract that they also can take small portion from the profit that is allowable in islam so that they can give a more quality uh, job to do the investment maybe through that way they, the 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 takaful can make more money and the policy holder can make more money also rather than they give you small fees they don't do a good job then you also got a small return so it's a win win situation and depend uh, on uh, both party uh, agreement and uh, discussion for the benefits of uh the takaful operator and also for the benefit of the uh, policy order yeah so that's the end for our today chapter on this uh, under uh, risk takaful and risk uh, and how they operate because if we don't teach you you also may think in case of like case of the malaysian airline how they solve the problem to cover the claim and for example tsunami uh, billions of claim come over the insurance uh, uh, small insurance cannot uh, cover so if they cannot cover what they do they have gone bankrupt they have to close down then the policy holder cannot get anything so they cannot be allowed that's why in the balance sheet they must in the account when they submit to the government they must show your future risk how they going to cover so either they have to uh, read the full it to the normal islamic way or even the reinsurance to the conventional if the sharia compliant uh, conventional insurance company so all these thing is uh, very interesting for you to know the basic operation of uh, how the insurance operate and the islam distinct eh, difference between how the conventional insurance operation and also the islamic way uh, operation which is conventional is more purely commercialized whereas uh, the islamic way is more like cooperative way of uh, helping each other so that's uh, for today lecture and uh, you continue discuss further in class and anything that you understand can uh, let us know lah so thank you very much assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh